Welcome to Unertal Scopes Q&A. Our urban sniping video series generated a lot of questions and comments from viewers on Unertal Scopes, both in how to set them up, focus them, set parallax, and also how to determine what the magnification readings are. So what we'll do is go through those questions in this video. If you have any additional questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. These are the three rifles I use the most that have unertal scope mounts on them. This one is a Remington 722 in 222 Remington. This has a lower power unertal scope on it. It's a six power. And what you'll see is right here on this back ring, it'll tell you what your power setting is here. And then these have the target indicator knobs on it to give you your adjustments. All three of these are set up with the recoil spring on them, and that helps the scope reset after you fire it. One of the reasons these scopes last so long is when it fires, the scope sets forward and then it rebounds back. And that way you're not stressing the optics. Unertal scopes in general have really good optics, and they last really well if you take care of them. They do have steel bodies, so you do have to keep them old. The rings are aluminum, and the rings come in two diameters. You have one of the smaller diameter. These first two guns have the older, smaller body size. This other Remington here, we have a larger body size Unertal, where the scope body is a lot larger. You can see here the difference. And what happens is these rings are set for that difference in diameter. So when you're buying these or you're setting them up, if you're putting a scope on a rifle, you need to make sure the rings match the particular scope you have. There's three steps you go through to set up a unertal scope. Modern scopes, you may go through these same steps also if they have adjustable parallax on them. So the first step we do is we set the eye relief. And in the older urban sniping videos, we went through how to set the eye relief and, and adjust your spring and your position on your track here. So you can go back and take a look at that video and see how to do that. But what I'm going to caution you with is your eye relief is super critical on high powered scopes. So your 10 and your 14 power scopes, your eye relief is going to be critical. Now what happens there is everybody talks about cheek weld what you're really doing is a cheek weld is the way that you establish your eye position in exactly the same spot every time that's why a cheek weld and your eye relief are super critical if you don't have a good cheek weld and eye relief you'll never get these in focus so once you have your eye relief established on these scopes then what you do is you focus it now what happens in the scope here is your focus is this back eyepiece. In some of these, you may have to crank them out pretty far in order to get good focus. The best thing to do is go outside and you hold your gun up to the blue background or a white clouds up in the sky. And you want to look away real quick because that way you get a true focus. If you continue to look into the scope, your eyes will actually adjust to a bad focus and make it look clear. And then when you remount the gun and look through it again, it'll be blurry. So once you get your back focus cleared, then you work on your parallax. And now we'll go to the drawing board and kind of show you what the parallax adjustment actually is and how it relates to the scope. So here on the uh, dry erase board, these top two figures, we're going to explain parallax. So what happens is right here you have the target. This is your objective lens on the end of your scope. And this is the eyepiece reticle is here. What happens is when your parallax isn't focused properly, that means this objective lens 
hasn't been moved properly to put the light you're gathering on your eyepiece. So what happens is your light rays come in and they focus somewhere other than on your eyepiece. So no matter what you do with your focus, your image is going to be blurry. And as your magnification goes up, it's more critical to align. So what happens is on the Unerto, you adjust this objective lens. And that way you bring your eyepiece into the same plane that the light is intersecting on. So what happens is if you're shooting at 300 yards, 600 yards, or 1,000 yards, you're going to have to adjust this lens in order to bring this point coincident. One way to be able to tell if that's happening is when you're looking in the scope, this is your crosshair, and this is a target. And if you take and you move your head in a circle around the edge of the scope and you're looking through it, your target will appear to move around your crosshair. And the reason this happens is your eyes look in here and as you're moving around, these two points are not in the same place. If your parallax is adjusted properly, your crosshairs and the image will be on the same plane here. And that way, if you move your head around in a circle, then they'll all appear in the same place and it won't be moving. And the reason that's important is your parallax adjustments on your scope are not absolute. There's a lot of manufacturing tolerance and they're kind of a general suggestion is the best way to look at it. So what you'll do is you'll use those intermediate markings, the one through eight, nine, 10, to bring you into a fine alignment on parallax. So that's the objective of what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this fo focal point here of the incoming light match your eyepiece. That's why if your parallax is not adjusted properly, you'll never be able to focus your scope in the proper way to see the target. But what happens is the images you're getting from long range come through the scope objective and they're focused in the body of the scope here. And what happens is you want to put your reticle with your crosshairs so that these light rays are actually focusing in the same spot. On this six power Unertle, what you need to do is loosen this objective. You can actually turn your parallax adjustment. And when you run this out, you'll find that you have 50 feet, 50 yards, 100 yards, 200 yards, and on some guns, you'll have infinity. So on this particular gun, what I normally do is I, I have it set up for 100 yards. And if I'm going to take a 200 yard or longer shot, then I'll set it to 200 yards. Here we have the 6 power Unertle on the Remington 722. The locking ring is right here on the objective. The adjustment ring is beside it right here. This one, you have your yardage markings right here, and then your fine scale marking here. These markings on your scope are not exact. So what will happen is you'll need to go through the process of fine tuning this. And what you'll learn is in the 10 and 14, 16 and 20 power scopes, this is super critical. Because if you're shooting at five or 600 yards or a thousand yards, you're gonna get some blurring out and moving of the reticle if it's not set properly. So this one is a little bit different. This has a screw assembly that sits in a track and moves back and forth, but you adjust it the same way and you have the infinity setting on this one for ultra long range. The, adjust, the locking ring is this back one right here, so you loosen this one, and this is your adjustment ring right here. And you can see your markings right there, so when you turn this, it moves it in these tracks where these three bolts are. Once you get it where you want it, then you lock it right here again. This is a close-up of the 14 power Unertle scope. Here we have the parallax yardage markings. 
These are the fine markings, 456. Here we have our bolt studs that ride in the track. This is the, focus, this is the parallax adjustment ring, and then this is the parallax locking ring here. Now, this last one has a sunshade, but it does not have an adjustable objective for parallax. With high-powered rifle scopes, normally on scopes that have the parallax permanently set at the factory, it's set at 150 yards. On 22 rim fires, it's usually 80 yards that they're set at. In summary, the way you set a unertal scope up is step one, set your eye relief. Once you're comfortable with your eye relief, you take and you focus your back reticle lens pointed at the sky or a white wall background. I prefer the sky because it gives you a much better result. Following setting of your focus, then you set your parallax. And what you want to do is set the parallax for the range you'll be using the gun at. If your field conditions and range is different than what you've estimated when you set your parallax, you'll have to adjust it in the field, which is not difficult to do. If you follow the procedure we discussed looking through the scope, it shouldn't be an issue and you can do it pretty quickly once you're in practice. And you won't hurt these rifles adjusting the parallax. They were designed to do that and operate in the field. So please rate, subscribe, leave any other questions or comments you have below, and we'll see you on the next video.